Welcome to part seven of this series of videos on creating a Blazor application using Syncfusion controls and Dapper. The objective of this series of videos is to demonstrate the use of a header detail application and we're using countries and cities uh, as an example. Just to remind ourselves, uh, what we're aiming to do is to have countries uh, a page with countries uh, selected from a drop down list and then to display a, ser a series of cities associated with that particular country. We'll also have the ability to add, edit and delete a city. So let's have a look at the code. If you haven't already got it open, open Visual Studio and uh, open the Blazor Countries project. The first thing we're going to do is add a new page for the countries and cities. So if you go to pages, right click, select add, and it's a razor component. We'll call it countries and cities. Click add. This will add the basic uh, the very basic data, go to the top and I've got some code that I want to copy and paste in. So you can see the page routing is going to be countries and cities uh, and we're using the countries, the Blazor countries data. We're going to be using both the countries and the cities so we're injecting uh, both both services. Um, let's give it a page heading. Countries and cities. Right, I'm just going to save that. And as a bit of a diversion, uh, the navigation at the moment is still left with the uh, the countries and the, sorry, the counter and the fetch data from the. Uh, sample blazer application so I'd like to change that now so if we go to nav menu and at the top uh, we've got blazer countries let's just put a space in there so it looks marginally nicer uh, the first of these li uh, links it just says home at the moment so we'll just change that to countries and the one that says counter will have a cities and we'll just delete this last item altogether and save that. Now just a quick test we'll just run it So now we've got Blazor Countries as the name of the uh, project, Countries and Cities. And if I click on Cities, there's nothing to show at that address because it's still pointed to counter. Right, let's go back and correct that. That should be. it is. Right, let's run it again. Right, so it is. Fine. If nothing else, that just shows the value of uh, testing, testing the code regularly. Let's close the nav menu and go back to countries and cities. What we're going to have on here at the top for the countries is a Syncfusion drop down list. Uh, and as usual, I've got the code ready for that. And it is this. In fact, I'll replace, the, I think it includes the code as well. Yep. So the drop down list. Um, has got a T item, a T value of countries and string. The data source is countries. 
and it's just going to have a placeholder that says select a country, which is going to appear in the drop down list before the user selects anything. And the text will be the country name, i.e. that's what's going to be displayed. And the uh, value is the country ID, the key, the primary key of the uh, countries table. So we're declaring an I, I enumerable of the country's object. And then when the page initializes, it's going to populate the list of countries from the countries table using the countries await country service dot countries get all. Let's just try that. Make sure that's working. That's fine. And is it showing any countries? Yes, it is. So that that part seems to be working fine. As we have just seen, by default, uh, the width of the drop down list is the full width of the page and the the height of the drop down is is about 350 pixels. Now we can change that. There are two properties we can add in here which is pop-up height and pop-up width. And so if we set the pop-up height to say 200 pixels and pop-up width of let's say 250 pixels, that should control the, the the height and width. Well, as you can see, that sh that controls the height and width of the actual drop down, but it doesn't control the width of the drop down box that you select. Uh, that, that you initially click in. Um, so going back to the code, I couldn't understand why that wasn't happening. That seems to be a bit of a uh, a bit of strangeness around that. But we can get around that by adding some uh, CSS code around here. So if I enter a, a div. and class give it a give it a name And then give it the, add the CSS, which I've got. Right, so let's see if that's had the effect we were hoping for. Yes, we've now got the the width of the drop down box and the, the list itself to be uh, the same width of 250 pixels. Fine. So back to the code again. And the next stage is to add the data grid for the cities. This again, we're going to be using SyncFusion uh, control, the SyncFusion data grid. So I'll just grab the code for that. And this 
mimics the the same that we had for, for cut for countries so it's got an id it's got a data source which we haven't declared yet um, allowing sorting sorting and allowing resizing and the height will be 200 pixels we're going to have two columns the city name which we're going to have with a, a title of city name and we're going to align it on the left with a width width of 50 and the second column is going to be the city population that's going to be formatted uh, with comma separated thousands and no decimal places and it's going to be aligned to the right but we do need to uh, define this this data source Okay, we'll save that. And we'll just run it to check everything's working. Working. So there's our country list and our grid. Uh, we could perhaps improve it by putting a, a bit of a space in between here, uh, but everything looks fine. Now, so far, we've got the, the drop down list. We can select a country, but we haven't got any way of linking or we haven't established the way of linking the country with the cities. And that's going to be our next task. Let's just start by putting that space in between the drop down list and the data grid. Right, that's got that done. Now we need to detect when a user has selected a country from the drop down list at the top and then to populate the data grid at the bottom with the cities that belong to that particular country. To do that, we need to add a drop down list event here. So let me copy that and paste it in here. So the drop down list uh, event is going to select, is going to be triggered when the value changes. Now we, meet, we need to make a change to the, the SQL uh, before we go any further. On the when we generated the SQL codes, uh, we had stored procedures for cities to delete, get all, get one, insert and update. But what we need for the dot drop down, sorry, for the data grid is to get all the cities associated with one country. Uh, so uh, we'll create a new stored procedure for that. And I have the code here. create a new query. So what we're doing here is passing in the country ID and then we're selecting the city ID, city name, the country ID and the city population from cities where the country ID is being is the country ID being passed in and we're going to order it by city name. So let's execute that. Don't need that any longer. Refresh. And we've now got the stored procedure cities but get by country. So back in the C sharp code, uh, we need to make a change to the cities service. So let's go to the cities service. And we need to add a section for the uh, getting by by country ID. Oh, I'm 
I'm jumping all over the place. Right, city service. Where would be a good place to put it? Insert. Get all. Get one. put it here so that is very similar to the others it's just passing in the parameter of country ID and then return using the cities get by country to return the cities for that particular country we also need to change the ice city service and Add that in there of this in the code section of this countries and cities we need to add a parameter in the code to handle the selected country ID So that's so on the change event, which we're just going to add, we're going to pick up the selected country ID. Put that at the bottom. So when there's a change uh, on the uh, drop down list, it's just going to assign uh, the selected country ID to that and then get the cities for that particular country. Right, let's save everything. Nothing's going to work. Well, we, aren't going to, we haven't got any data, so uh, we won't be able to show this working, but uh, at least we shouldn't get any errors. No, so nothing, nothing, nothing's broken. Uh, so we'll now tackle the next problem, which is to be able to add, edit and delete cities for a particular country.